What am I to do? That could be my child on that snow-covered mountaintop. Please, Bonnie, don't fret. What would you call the party who has a friend who has a house? Who is it? Fret. It's me, Mama! Open up! I will be with him. I can't stand it. Use what the hell are you doing here at this hour? I know I should have called first, but I just couldn't stay in that house another minute. Well, now, don't fret about it. What's the matter? Something wrong? Well, yes, Mama, I would say something was wrong. I have left Ed forever. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Eunice. You two just had another little fight. You got yourself a little bit more upset than usual, that's all. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no. <laughs> this time it is for good. You see, what happened was Mary Beth Pickens called me a few weeks ago to tell me that she had seen Ed in a certain locality. Well, I didn't believe her. I thought she was just making it up because you know how spiteful Mary Beth Pickens can be. Well, then this morning she called again and she brought it up again. And I said to her, okay, Mary Beth Pickens, you just put your money where your mouth is and you prove it. So she comes by my house, and I get in her car, and we drive down to Ed's hardware store. It's open till 9 o'clock tonight, you know. We parked across the street. Well, first thing you know, out comes Ed around 6 o'clock, leaving the store in charge of that stupid Mickey Harp. So I followed Ed, and are you listening to me? Are you watching that damn TV? Well, I am sorry, Eunice, but it's right at the finish. All three of these women have got an illegitimate baby that they've given up for adoption. And one of them is the mother of that baby stranded up there on that snow-covered mountaintop, and I'm just about to find out which one it is. It's Ruth Roman. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I have been sitting here for two and a half solid hours suffering through all kinds of damn commercials just so I can find out which one of them women was the baby's real mother just so you can come in at the very end and ruin it for me. Ruin it? Ruin it for you? What about my life? My life is ruined. I have left my husband. Don't you have anything to say about that at all? Don't be ridiculous, Eunice. Where are you gonna live? Well, right here with you. Where else? <laughs> Now, Eunice, there is no need to make a hasty or rash decision just like that. Let's sit down and talk about it. Come here, darling. Let's sit down, talk to Mama. Tell me what Ed could possibly have done that is so terrible. He went to a massage parlor. <laughs> so I just left him a goodbye and farewell note and hightailed it over here in a taxi. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see oh, him. Too. I never want to see him. Get him. <laughs> Just stay right there. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh Oh, hi there. I just thought I'd mention to you about the fair, if you didn't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot all about you. Uh, Mama, I left my purse at home. Would you lend me $3 and some odd change? What do you think? I made of money? I don't even know if I've got any money around here. I happen to be on a very tight budget. Budget, budget, budget. <laughs> Trying to think you got a little peace and quiet and somebody comes barging through the door screaming for money. Somebody? I am not somebody. I am your daughter. Oh, when am I ever going to make a dent in you? All right, just how much is it you want exactly? Uh, $3.75. $3.75 from her house over here? How did you two come by way of Kentucky? No, ma'am, we come down 3rd Street there and turned on... Never mind. I think I got $3 worth of change here. Five, ten. <laughs> Eunice. If you do leave Ed, just what do you plan on doing for a living? You ain't only had but one job in your whole life over at Woolworths weighing up peanuts. Well, I don't know. I figured I could think about that while I'm living here. Just give me a chance, will you? All I know if I, is I have taken the first positive step forward in a new life. That's what my daddy used to say. Take one step well, at I a time. I want your daddy's advice. I'll ask for it. Now, that's another thing, Eunice. I don't know if it's such a good idea the two of us living here together. I mean, we're both very set in our ways, you know. What you mean is you don't want me here, isn't that it? You left off counting at 25 cents. You know that you are more than welcome to stay for a night or two. Well, no, thank you, ma'am. You can just forget it. Oh, uh, ma'am, I could be out picking up some other fares if you... All I appreciate right, it. grab it, grab it, grab the money, grab the money. That dog is getting everywhere you go these days. Grab the money and run. No, how do you do? May I help you nice day turn? Grab the money and run! Yes, ma'am. That's, that's 
Wait just a minute. I am going with you. You're going to take me over to Mary Beth Pickens' house. Well, this Mary Beth Pickens, would she be able to pay you fair? Oh, yes. Yeah, she'll give it to you with an open heart. Here, Mama, take your money. I won't stay in this house where I'm not welcome another 10 seconds. I'm sure glad I found out what you're about, even though it took me a lifetime. Oh, that's it! That's it! Break the door down. Eunice, will you kindly explain to me what meaning, if any, is in this note? I hope you had a pleasant afternoon at the quote store, unquote. You will never see me again. E. <laughs> you, I take it, are E. Will you please go away? Was I supposed to be someplace other than the store this evening? <laughs> This evening? Ho, ho, ho. Not this evening. Maybe for weeks. Maybe for months. While your devoted wife and two babies were at home thinking you was working at the store. Oh, brother. I must be driving the getaway car for the Mafia gang. And here I didn't even know about it. <laughs> Does the name Roman Pleasure Palace strike a chord with you? Is that what you think? That I was in some Did kind of... you deny it? Well, what would be the good? You wouldn't believe me anyway, would you? You never believed me. That's why this time I came prepared. Mickey, get in here. You quit hollering out my front door like that. The neighbors are going to think I'm running the massage parlor. <laughs> You don't mind. I think I'd rather have that money your mama promised me than to You mean to tell Pickens. me that you, you brought that moron Mickey Hart here at a time like this? <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Siggins. Nice to see you again. <laughs> hi, Mother Hart. Sorry, you're looking bright as a button. Don't you mother harper me and quit hollering at me. I'm not the one that is deaf, you squirrel head. Say, I, I don't believe I met you yet. <laughs> oh, oh, how you do? I'm Harold Verkamp. Nice to meet you, Mr. Squirrel Head. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, did you lose something here? Yeah, I need about $2.85 more. Oh, there's a dime over here. Here's a dime. See, I asked Mickey to come home with me, Eunice, because I thought you'd join us in a carefree game of hearts. <laughs> and what did we find? This note. Well, I don't know what kind of bee got in your bonnet, Eunice, but I thought I'd just better bring Mickey along here tonight to tell you exactly where I was this evening. Go ahead, tell her, Mickey. <laughs> right. Uh, the chief and I was in the store until closing time, which was at 9 o'clock. Uh, he did not go nowhere at no time or duck out. Oh, he did not say duck out around 6 o'clock for an hour or so? <clears throat> uh, no, around that time, he was busy as a beaver. He was stacking, sorting, and sweeping. I saw him go into the massage parlor. <laughs> Jigs up. Excuse me, could you move your foot? Oh, well, I know what you mean, Eunice. Yeah, I did go out about six o'clock to get a newspaper. Remember, Mick? Yeah, I went out and then I, I took a little stroll to kind of uncramp my legs. I, my leg got all cramped up and I was kneeling down, rearranging those light dimmers on the bottom shelf. Uh, by the way, Mick, we got to get those light dimmers on the upper shelf. Now, I mean, they're a hot little item now. All right, I'll make a note of that, Chief. Yeah. Right, light dimmer on the upper shelf. Well, any old who, I did go by this gaudy-looking place, and I thought I'd stop in there and ask them where the nearest newsstand was. And... Is that what you went in there for? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, really? Then how come that painted-up huzzy looked at you and said, Why, Ed, you little rascal, this is the second time you've been in here this week. Where were you, anyhow? Right behind me? <laughs> What business is it of yours if I did go into a massage parlor? I mean, what, what, what's wrong with it? It is a sin! You have lost your immortal soul and you're gonna fry in hell. 
A man has to have some emotion in life, Eunice. Uh, he was trying them single bars for a while, but they were... <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. I don't need your help no more. Well, let me tell you something, Ed Higgins. You have lost me. Well, good riddance. Boy, this is almost too good to be true. Maybe it'd be a good idea if we went our separate ways, Eunice. Yes, sir, I can hardly imagine the thrill of walking into my own house without cringing. Oh! Oh! You get out of my way, you simp. <laughs> Look at that, a buffalo head neck. You know you can't hardly find them anymore. Eunice, anymore. don't you dare let Ed keep the house. You're gonna need it for you and the boys. She can have the house. I hate it. Besides, if I'm gonna be a single man on the loose, I just need a furnished room like Mickey's got. A cute little furnished apartment would suit me and my boys just fine. Don't be a jerk, Eunice. Take the house. <laughs> there ain't an apartment building in this town's gonna take you with them two monsters. Besides, apartment, bu apartment buildings are expensive and you ain't never gonna get a job. Can't you for once ever see something in your life that's hopeful? You know, miracles do happen. You know... <laughs> I was cruising around southeast part of town the other night, and I was going to turn there at 6th Street, and I did turn at 6th Street, when I really should have turned at 8th Street, because I was on my way down there to the Donut Hut, you know, McGee at the night. Well, anyway, I got there at 6th, and somehow or another, some little old voice right inside me said, turn left here on 6th. <laughs> Eunice, trust me on this one. Don't listen to this jackass. I mean, miracles might happen to some of them shepherds over there in them foreign countries that ain't got nothing but time on their hands, but they do not occur in this neck of the woods. And if you're nuts enough to run out on your meal ticket, you get everything you can out of it. And don't you forget about child support and alimony, neither. Yeah, well, Eunice and the boys can have half of everything I make. Well, hell, that's nothing. <laughs> you can barely make ends meet now, Eunice, and you're getting it all, except for the $10 now and then that Ed throws away at that massage parlor. It's uh, only $7.50. He was getting a raise. <laughs> all right, you two, now just come on. I think it's time we cut out all this nonsense. Now, Ed, if you take a furnished room, you're gonna get as buggy as your stooge there. You ain't gonna be able to be, a, you're not gonna be able to afford eating out. And you ain't never gonna find another girl dumb enough to marry you. And Eunice, if you try living on your own, you're gonna die of starvation with an open movie magazine sitting in your lap. So why the hell don't the two of you go on home and let me watch my TV? <laughs> Well, I guess that little spat's over. <laughs> Say, uh, uh, you two love words want to be alone. I, I can get a taxi or something. Oh, don't be silly, Mickey. I'll be glad to drop you off home. And the man said he would take a taxi. Why should we go all the way across town and just drop him home? Man happens to be my friend. You don't turn your back on your friends. Well, you turn your back on your wife. <laughs> Find 50 more cents. Yes, 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 yes,